Hi, my name is Spencer and welcome to Thoughts on Thinking. In this video I will be looking at the similarities and differences of Carl Jung and Jordan Peterson when it comes to their views on God and Christianity. With that said, I am not intending to critique their views on God. This video is made with the intention to analyse to a certain degree how much influence Carl Jung had on Jordan Peterson when it comes down to religious views on what God is. To do this I will be comparing what Jordan Peterson has said in the past with what Carl Jung wrote in his God letter. I'm using this letter as reference because it was written with the intention of laying out Jung's view of what God might be to him. He also wrote it close to his death so any certified views on God from his perspective are mostly to be represented in this document. The first strong similarity is what you could call the metaphysical Christian similarity between John Peterson and Carl Jung. Jung said in his letter about his view on God that, I quote, I think of myself as a Christian since I am entirely based upon Christian concepts. So the question comes to what would be these Christian concepts that could draw out an overall foundation for the concept of being, value and knowing of such value. These would consist of a monotheistic God who created heaven and hell being the polar opposites, individual responsibility and also the transcendent logos or word of God to formulate a hierarchical order of value based on good and evil. In terms of Jordan Peterson, these beliefs are very much mirrored because Peterson always goes on about the metaphorical, phenomenological, metaphysical and theological importance of Christianity and God in the Bible. He agrees with the basic concepts of Christianity. John Peterson does say in a Joe Rogan interview, So what I've been trying to do is to resurrect God. I'm trying to resurrect the dormant logos, I suppose, if you have to put it that way. That's what I'm trying to do because he knows that the Christian concepts are paramount and fundamental to the Western structure of society and culture. So on that note, it is fairly clear where both of their Christian religious influence stands. The second is this. Jung, before making that claim in his letter on God, says, I quote, I am no Christian. You could see this as Jung completely contradicting himself, but doing so would be a bit silly or maybe even a logical fallacy because here he must be asserting that he is not a fundamentalist Christian, or one that designates his belief around the literal truth of the Bible, as that's the only outlier left. Jung says he is entirely based upon Christian concepts. He's emphasising the importance of the core message within Christianity and the effect it has had on him. He's not saying anything about literal occurrence in the Bible being true or once part of physical reality. This again is the same for Jordan Peterson, in that Jordan doesn't take the full Christianity package home with him. He takes the metaphorical truth, the logos and or word of God and reworks them into a book like 12 Rules for Life, which you could call a modern rendition of the 12th commandment, which is also something that Carl Jung then claims we should do also in this letter, when he says this. The Christian idea proves its vitality by a continuous evolution, just like Buddhism, our time certainly demands some new thought in this respect, as we cannot continue to think in an antique or medieval way. Now let's actually get onto the God similarities. Jung says God is, I quote, an apt name giving to all overpowering emotions in my cyclical system subduing my conscious will and usurping control over myself. So here he is saying that God is overpowering emotions that overcome him or his psyche, thus affecting his conscious will by reducing its force or power, thus taking control over him. What Jordan says that is most similar to this is, God is the voice of conscience. And he also says this with his debate with Sam Harris. God is how we imaginatively and collectively represent the existence and action of consciousness across time, as the most real aspects of existence manifest themselves across the longest of time frames, but are not necessarily apprehensible as objects in the here and now. Which is him saying that God is the cause for the existence and action of consciousness, which again is very similar to what Jung says, but just worded differently. Emotions occur in a state of consciousness and then they guide our actions to some degree but not completely. Still, on a general plane, Jung is associating God to being part of or an element of what occurs in conscious state or psyche. So both Peterson and Jung are linking God to actively being involved within consciousness, thus causing specific action to be played out in reality due to our knowledge of its influential potency, let's say. Jordan usually represents this belief in the idea of Logos, which is the divine transcendent word of God, and that you should embody the Logos or word of God to your core. 
He also coins towards the idea that the logos are part of you already, but that you should be aligning yourself with them to allow yourself in becoming a better person for yourself and family, but essentially for society as it will collectively guide us towards placing order into being and to develop further away from chaos. Therefore God is part of your consciousness because we know that truth is of the highest ideal which is the logos that drives us forward in this motion. It's, it's part of the Christian doctrine that at the beginning of time the logos of Yahweh operated on potential and brought forth habitable, the habitable world, order, and it was perfect in some strange sense, it was the paradise mm -hmm in which Adam and Eve were placed, and the paradise was a walled garden, a well-watered place. And the walled garden is a place of order and chaos, culture and nature, and that's because people inhabit a garden of culture and nature. That, that's, that's our environment, and if those two properties are properly balanced, then inside that garden everyone can flourish, and human beings are in principle made in the image of that logos. <clears throat> And that's why we can speak things into being. And we do. And when you speak truth, then you speak paradise into being. And when you speak falsely, you speak hell into being. And that's the truth. And what that means is that with every decision that you make, you decide for yourself and for everyone else whether you're going to tilt the world a little bit more towards hell or a little bit more towards heaven. And none of this is fictional because we've seen the consequences. Around the perfect man, everything comes together. And I don't believe that that's, that's, that's where the infinite logos that, express, that stretches across time and space comes together in a single individual. That's the Christian story. And the reason for that is, is that every single person is embedded in a specific time and place. That's you as an individual. But at the same point, you're also the embodiment of this thing that has acted across forever to call chaos into habitable being. You're both this divine, eternal, transcendent essence and the finite shell that you inhabit. Of course there are some massive differences between Jung's assertion and Jordan's assertion in how God plays its role within consciousness. Jung says that these overpowering emotions in his consciousness acts as subduing him as if putting him in a state of hypnosis caused by God, which is very confusing to understand. He is also referring God's action upon him in a subjective manner and not in an objective manner, whereas Jordan refers to God's action or intent within consciousness as being an objective truth in all of us, which is that of the Logos, which is God's word, as it is representative of divine transcendent truth. Another way Jung reinstates the idea of God being within us, or at least within him, is when he says, I quote, I would say of a God beyond good and evil, just as much dwelling in myself as everywhere else. You could also say maybe that when Jung writes that God is beyond good and evil, he might actually be referring to God representing transcendent divine truth, which you could say is beyond good and evil, and is only known by God. If that was the case, then that could also fit with Peterson's premise that God is the logos within consciousness that represents divine truth to be made into habitable order. But I don't want to be putting words into Jung's mouth with something that he never said. It's just a possibility. Now the next statement by Jung is something that completely goes against the beliefs of Jordan Peterson's view on God. Peterson also said in one of his debates with Sam Harris this. God is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. This value or values must be something along the lines of goodness, truth, and knowledge. Jung, on the other hand, says, I quote, I do neither commit the impertinence of a hypostasis, nor of an arrogant qualification such as, God can only be good. With this being said, Jung claims that God could also be the complete opposite of goodness, truth, and knowledge, but of trickery, evil, and or deceit. This therefore goes against Peterson's view that God is of the highest value in the hierarchy of values. The biggest difference between Jung and Peterson with their views on God is that of Gnosticism and the occult. Many refer Carl Jung to being a Gnostic, and I can see that his belief and what constitutes its structure is not completely grounded in Christianity. You could very well argue against that his personal view on God is at all traditionally Christian. We all know Jung was massively influenced by the occult, mysticism, Gnosticism, and alchemy, and so is Peterson to a large degree, especially if he is so heavily influenced by him, which is obvious. 
but in my view I would not say Peterson uses Gnosticism as a fundamental structure or the occult to build upon a view of God. This is because Gnostic writings often describe God as incomprehensible and an unknowable entity. Peterson makes claims that God is in relation with elements of our consciousness, or at least through the logos via truth and therefore knowable and personal to a certain degree, unlike what the Gnostic tradition would claim. But with that said, I would need to do more research on Gnosticism before I make any videos on that in relation to Jung or Peterson, especially when Gnosticism is an extremely broad religious idea which holds a lot of vague areas due to its antiquity, but that is definitely something I will be doing in future videos. Overall, not only is Jordan Peterson influenced by Jung in psychology, but also massively influenced by him in relation to his view on God, as I have demonstrated especially in relation to God and the psyche. This analysis is not perfect because I am not using all of the statements made by Jung or Peterson on their views on God, as that would take a very long time, but hopefully this video can give some insight into both their views on God and how there are similarities, disagreements and or differences between the two. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below and subscribe for more content on philosophy, psychology and symbolism.